Hello friends. Today in this video, I will be recording and talking about India-China relations. Now this will be about 10 to 15 minutes video on my YouTube channel. And what I have realized over a period of time while interacting with a lot of SSB aspirants that the knowledge of relation between any two countries with India, I have found the student not able to understand how to tackle the relations. So in this short video, about 10 minutes, I would like to give you an insight about how the progress of relation between India and China took place. So in between you will get some slides also, which I will give the timelines of various important issues which happened. <clears throat> but otherwise, we will divide this relationship period of India and China into three main parts. One is up to 1962, then from 1962 to 1988 and then from 1988 to the present time. Now if we take our mind back to a little bit of historical backdrop, after India got independence, very soon even China, that is People Republic of China became an independent nation. So India became the second, uh, second non-communist country to recognize the People's Republic of China and this was in December 1949. India recognized China as a nation. And in 1950, April 1950, India also imported the first ambassador to China, which was K.M. Panikar. Now, <clears throat> subsequently, the relations were pretty good. Both the countries maintained good relations. And in 1954, India and China signed a very famous agreement called the Punch Seal Agreement. After this very important landmark of Panchil Agreement came a number of visits where that time our Prime Minister Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru and the, the President of People's Republic of China, they interacted on a number of occasions. Uh, in fact, uh, one very important development took place during that time that was regarding Tibet. Now as you know that Britishers when they were ruling India they also included the Tibet region under the British. After the British left, now they did not include Tibet in India or in China or something like that. They just left Tibet the way it was, <coughs> kind of an autonomous state. So China came into Tibet and you know what, in April 1955, India removed all their presence from Tibet. and we accepted that Tibet is part of China. We also removed our presence there. We had our post and telegraph communication system that was being run through India. We withdrew from there. This was a development in 1955. In 1956, what happened? That time, the Premier of uh, the President of China, Zhou Enlai, he visited India on a goodwill mission. And this was uh, termed as a very successful mission, and India and China were moving on a very positive note. <clears throat> now during these missions, because there was no signature on the borders, alignment of borders, India and uh, China, uh, the heads of state, Indian, uh, especially Indian head of state, we wanted a commitment from China so that the border issue should uh, get resolved as soon as possible. <clears throat> because China did not recognize the Mahon line till that time. So the visiting President agreed that yes, they would uh, finish with this and when India sent the marked maps to China for the signatures, they refused to mark, sign the maps. So from there onwards, little bit of frigidity developed in our relationship when they did not sign the border agreement. And the situation in India, that time the government which had already <coughs> said that this agreement has been done and China and India boundary issues will get solved was also in a fix when China refused to sign any document, any map which gave the alignment, which accepted the alignment. Other than that, China put their claim on almost 40,000 kilometers of land uh, area which we call it today Arunachal Pradesh and earlier it was called as NEFA.
and they also put some claim in the area of Ladakh. However, the relationship did not become sore at this time. In 1957, our Vice President that time as Radha Krishnan also visited China. Then in 1959, when China tried to forcibly move into Tibet, because by that time though uh, Tibet was accepted as part of China, but Tibet had its own kind of number of ruler, ru, uh, rural, rulers which were there, which were you know kind of ruling their own small fiefdoms. So Chinese army started coming in to take over that area. And in 1959, the Dalai Lama was threatened by the Chinese armed forces and Dalai Lama escaped from there and he requested for India to give him political asylum, which India agreed and we agreed to keep Dalai Lama in India so that he could not come into the hands of the Chinese. Now obviously China did not take this development very nicely and the reason for uh, one of the reasons what is thought of that when China refused to do this or uh, kind of backstabbed us on the border uh, signing issues. So this was one of the developments which India also you know, thought they should accept and give Dalai Lama a place to uh, you know, stay peacefully and uh, not get into the hands of Chinese people. Now after this the this relations started becoming sour and in 1962 you are all aware that there was a full fledged war between India and China which lasted for many days and which was you know later finished by China declaring a unilateral ceasefire on the border. Uh, after this obviously the relations uh, were frigid. One more development took place when China started becoming closer to Pakistan in 1963. China and Pakistan signed a border agreement uh, and in that China took almost 5000 square kilometers of the territory of Pakistan occupied Kashmir and that territory, territory called the Saksham Valley till date is in the hands of China. Now moving ahead to the second part of the relation after 1962 obviously the diplomatic relations were snapped during the war time and stayed in a snap state for quite some time. Only in 1970 uh, informal kind of contact between Indian Chinese diplomats were re-established and China also in 1974 when we did our first peaceful nuclear explosion, explosion China criticized us. So overall China was not in support of India. Though initially the phase in 1954-55 uh, when the message of Hindi Chini Bhai Bhai and all that was there. After that for 62 onwards the relationship was frigid. Now we are in the second period 62 to 1988 where the relations were quite frigid. Uh, 1976, India re-established their ambassador to People's Republic of China and Mr. K. R. Narayan was that ambassador who took, uh, took chair in 1976 July. <coughs> After that in 1979, India uh, gave an attempt to improve the relations with that time the Foreign Minister Sri Atal Bihari Vajpayee visited China. Now, in 1986, China condemned India that why did we include Arunachal Pradesh as full fledged state of Union of India. Before that, it was known as NEFA, North East Frontier Agency, but in 1986, India included that as one of the states which was condemned by China at that time. But nonetheless, India continued to try to improve the relations in 1988, that time Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi visited China and then the agreement was reached to set up a joint working group on the boundary question and 
joint group on economic relations trade science and technology was signed so this was the second landmark of improvement of relations of 1988 onwards when the both countries try to now engage with each other and establish a working group which could discuss the nitty gritties of border issue and solve the border issues and other than that also start with the uh, trade and other technology and other you know transfer transfer technology issues when india uh, the thing continued the engagement of uh, with both countries continued after 1988 at a good platform with the diplomatic ties having been restored now in 1998 when we did our second nuclear uh, test china again was on the top of you know condemning india for the nuclear test it also urged india to give up the nuclear ambition and sign npt which we did not do they also continued to tell new delhi to stop giving shelter to dalai lama now subsequently after this uh, moving ahead with the uh, relations of uh, between india and china uh, in this part 2 uh, let's start from year 2000 onwards in 2000 what india noticed was that china started building permanent road network very close to the lac in ladakh's aksai chin area so india objected to it however the development of road networks air fields very close to the lac continued after this in ja in june 2003 that time prime minister atal bihari vajpayee in a bid to further improve the relation between two uh, important asian countries he visited china and they signed a number of bilateral agreements and in 2006 after a long time of closure of nathula pass which was uh, closed in 1962 was also opened so that was a good development between the two countries but in 2007 china played another uh, game which was not appreciated by india the chief minister of arunachal pradesh when he was to visit china as part of a delegation they refused to give visa saying that because arunachal pradesh china takes it as part of china so he does not require a visa Which, was, which, which did not augur well with india and they also objected to that time prime minister manmohan singh visit to arunachal pradesh so these developments in 2007 and up to 9 was not that cordial however later on when uh, the prime minister manmohan singh visited china a bilateral trade agreement was signed and India became one of the largest trading partners of China with a trade reaching between us almost 50 billion dollars. After this there were number of uh, visits of senior people including the chief of army staff to each other country right so that was something which maintained the relation alongside the joint working groups continued to meet at 3 to 6 months interval to discuss the various issues on the border however the complete resol- uh, this thing of the issue of the border was not resolved and up to date is still unresolved almost 13 to 14 meetings of the joint working groups have taken place uh then in 2014 uh the president of uh, china prc xi jinping visited india and it was re- he was received in a big way in a big fanfare by that time the prime minister narendra modi and you all remember the visit was uh, uh, quite hyped a lot with his with his visiting sabarmati river and you know china also promised lot of investments in india so uh, everybody thought that yes the phase of further improvement which the previous government had already initiated will now reach new heights 
this was followed by uh, even our foreign minister in 2015 that uh, mrs shushma swaraj she also visited beijing and met the president of china at that time uh in 15 2015 again this 18th round of talk, talks took place on the land boundary issue and both sides continue to engage in a bid to resolve that issue in 2015 uh the prime minister modi he visited china and this visit was also a successful visit after this china invited india in 2017 to be part of the belt and road initiative which india refused to be part of and they declined to be part of that initiative however subsequently china uh, offered a full member status to india as part of sco which india accepted so now if you see this up to 2017 the relations though little undulating but were continuing at a good pace and the trade increased to up to 100 billion dollars which is quite a good trade between both the countries in spite of the boundary issues still being there the trade took the major seat and both the countries continue to engage well now in 2020 chinese troops try to move into the area in the galwan valley which was not occupied erstwhile by any of the countries which was only being dominated by patrolling up to certain points so if you read the see the map of galwan valley it has got some fingers and pangongso lake is there the boundary goes through the pangongso lake the accepted boundary and cuts through those fingers of that uh, the, the mountain features so both the sides were patrolling up to the fixed point however china started coming further inside taking claim which was thwarted by india in a big way in a strong way and there was a uh, tense situation where the troops clashed albeit without weapons but still both the troops clashed and there was lot of casualties on both sides the situation almost took 6 to 8 months to resolve and even today the issue is not completely resolved however keeping this uh, galwan valley issue aside the relation otherwise as for the trade is concerned are going on fine but yes the unless the border issue with china is completely resolved india cannot say that the issues with china or the relations with china are totally on the right track so with this much backdrop of understanding how the relation started and over the period how they have changed india has always been trying to keep good relations with all the nations not only of the uh, of asia but also of the world where china became one of the important uh, partners in asia and india wants to maintain cordial and good relations but for that it is very important that both the countries sit and resolve the border issue and the border is accepted to both the countries and then and only then in a long period of time in the coming time in the future we both countries can develop into uh, with good relations and both can prosper well on its part india and the indian government is making all its effort whatever possible to uh, have a breakthrough and solve the border issues so i hope you got a overview with this of the complete india china relations and subsequently in the few more uh, youtubes i'll also be touching about afghanistan myanmar and nepal issues with these neighboring countries of india so thank you very much so keep watching if you like this video give a thumbs up and keep watching our further videos on various aspect of uh, related to ssb aspirants which will be of use to you thank you जय हिंद